Okay, everybody, this is a short video for my middle school gifted art students. We are working on trying to draw some simple forms. Now, we're going to start out with a cylinder. When you start with a cylinder, you know you're going to have to deal with an ellipse or a flattened circle somewhere. Um, I find the big problem with my students is they try to draw a perfect circle every time, okay? That's really difficult to do, and especially if you try to do it with one line. So what I ask my students to do is in their sketchbook is to practice sketching their circles. You can see I'm not using one line. I can do it with a series of short lines, or sometimes I'll use longer lines. Now, some people don't like this because they think it's messy, but if it bothers you, you can take an eraser and you can fix it up. Okay, so, Either way, short lines or long lines are fine. Okay, and then you can go back and touch it up. But you don't want to do something like that. That's not going to work for you at all. So what I would like you to do first in your sketchbook, I want you to practice some circles. Just a few. You don't need a lot. But the more you do them, the more comfortable you get with them. You can do small ones if it makes you feel better, feel like they're easier. Gradually getting a little bit larger as you go. Okay, after you've got some circles, we're going to move this in just a little bit. Let's move the camera over a little bit so we can see them. There you go. Um, what we're going to do next is we're going to start to flatten the circles. So think about a roll of masking tape. And let's say you put your foot on top and you start pressing down. Your circle is going to get flatter. That masking tape roll is going to get flatter. And the more pressure you put on it, the flatter it's going to get. And the flatter until it's smushed all the way. These shapes right here, those are called ellipses, and I'm gonna write it down for you, but you don't have to write it down. Ellipses. And an ellipse is nothing more than a flattened circle. Now, where does this come into play, drawing our forms? Well, you need to be able to draw an ellipse to draw a cone and to draw a cylinder. And again, we're going to start with our cylinders first because that's the easiest. So, I would say when you feel like you can get a pretty good ellipse, and you notice too, ellipses are even. If you go kind of from corner to corner across, they should be even at the top and the bottom. If they're not, then you need to practice a little more. Okay? Uh, and again, with anything else, the more you practice, the easier it's going to get. So, let's draw a cylinder using our ellipse. Okay, we're going to just start with an ellipse right there. And again, I'm sketching it. I'm not trying to do it with one solid line. Okay, there's my ellipse. Now, to create the cylinder, I'm going to draw two parallel lines. And remember, when lines are parallel, they never cross. Okay, and again, I'm sketching. I'm not trying to draw one single line because that, again, that just doesn't work. Let's put a little X on that. All right, so I've got my lines to form the sides, my two parallel lines. Now, I want to close off the bottom. And probably the biggest mistake, and everyone makes it, is they try to close it with a line that's straight across. And you can tell it just doesn't work, okay, because 
The top of it is three-dimensional, but the bottom of it looks like a flat square. So you know by now you have to have a curve down here. Now how big of a curve? Well, here's the thing. If you look right here at this part of the ellipse, this front part, it's going to be the same on the bottom as it is here. So I'm going to try to copy that curve as closely as I can, just like that. All right, and then that makes it look more three-dimensional. If you can think of a stack of pennies, one on top of another, or any kind of coins, if you were drawing that, you would find that every ellipse, every edge of penny, is going to match from the top all the way down to the bottom. All right? And that's what gives our cylinder a curved look. Now, when I'm in the classroom and I'm teaching this to beginning students, I always say if you want to have, um, say, a label, say it's a soup can, you also follow these curves. I'm not sure why you would want to draw a soup can, but, you know, you never know. You come with a vertical line, and then for the label, it follows the curves. All right, and that keeps everything looking three-dimensional, even your lettering stays within those curves. All right, so that's one way to draw a cylinder. All right, let's try another cylinder. Let's say I cannot see the top of it. Well, if I can't see the top of it, my cylinder is going to curve upwards like this. Now, we know the rest of the ellipse is there. It's back there, all right? But you can't see it because that's the back edge. So if it helps you to draw the entire ellipse and then erase this one, that's fine. Whatever works best for you. So you start with your ellipse, your vertical lines. Mine may not be totally vertical because I'm drawing from the side here, okay? And then here's my top curve, the one you can see. Now, the bottom curve, if I try to match this one, I'm going to get something like that. And that doesn't look correct. Okay, maybe make that a little darker. That's not correct. It doesn't look right. So, I'm going to match this curve back here. Just like that. Might take a few times. And then... Since my can is not transparent, I'm going to go ahead and erase those. Okay, sorry for the shaking. All right, so there's two ways to draw a cylinder. Um, while we're watching this in class, if you all have any other questions about how to do cylinders, I'll work with you at your table. Okay, I guess I can do one more cylinder while we have the time. Let's go ahead and do a cylinder on its side, okay? It throws some people off, but really the cylinder is not changing. You have your ellipse, but instead of the line going through being horizontal, the line is vertical now. It still goes through the center. Let's go ahead and darken this a little bit. Next step would be my lines. They're horizontal now instead of vertical. And to do the bottom part, I have to, I have to finish this off. Not exactly the bottom, but the side here. Again, I'll get some people do this. Sometimes I get people doing this. Okay? There is no way that you can see inside both ends. So how do you solve that? You get rid of this back line. There you go. Now, to be honest, I can probably curve this a little more. 
there you go, and make it match. All right, so there you have cylinders. Start off with your circles, keep them sketchy, practice your ellipses by flattening the circles, and then put them together with parallel lines to create your cylinder.